thank you very much and uh, I just want to inform you that today we had a very good and interesting General Affairs Council discussion. First of all, we took a couple of important decisions. First, which is very close to the heart of the Latvian presidency, is a decision to allocate almost a billion euros uh, uh, to advance payments for the youth uh, use to tackle youth unemployment. Uh, we believe that uh, this is a very timely and very important agreement uh, because uh, the youth unemployment is of particularly grave concern for many EU member states and the presidency will do our best to finalize the work with the European Parliament. We also adopted the, uh, the decision uh, on uh, revised multi-annual financial framework for period 2014-2020 so that the EU budget money that has not been used in 2014 uh, will be available also to support investment for growth and jobs in the years of 2015 and 17. And finally, uh, we also concluded uh, the stabilization and association agreement with Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is an important step in our relations. That's also a good impetus for the government, the new government of the country, to step up the reform process and to get uh, closer to the European Union. We had also the discussion on migration. I informed my colleagues in the General Affairs Council on yesterday's uh, joint meeting of uh, Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Ministers of Interior. Uh, I do believe that uh, the proposals of the Commission, and here I want to particularly thank the Commission uh, that has prepared in a very short, at a very short notice, uh, 10 points uh, for deliberations for the Ministers and also for deliberations at the level of the European Council have been very helpful and I believe that those proposals are uh, forming a good basis for a uh, more comprehensive uh, strategy tackling uh, migration. Uh, we actually agreed already yesterday, and I do hope it's going to be in first also on Thursday, to work on the uh, issue of migration in three directions, to stop smugglers, to enhance Triton and Poseidon operations, and of course to enhance our diplomatic efforts with the third countries on this issue. Um, we also discussed uh, the non-paper that has been prepared by the Latvian Presidency on interinstitutional uh, agreement uh, on better lawmaking. Uh, we had also a good discussion with the Commission with first vice president of the commission, Mr. Timmermans. Uh, on that basis of the discussion, we will prepare a formal letter to the commission, to the first vice president, outlining the council's priorities in the upcoming uh, negotiations. That's a better lawmaking, programming, also the other issues. And at our working lunch, we discussed uh, the measures that we can take preventing radicalization. That discussion follows the discussion at the level of the European Council and the statement issued in February, and the Council met uh, to discuss fight against terrorism. And I believe the General Affairs Council has been and remains to be a good platform for horizontal discussion because we all agreed that uh, fighting radicalization anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim uh, sentiments and, and, and also uh, radical views is that this, uh, this fight needs to be seen in a complex way. We have already had ministers of justice and home affairs discussing this issue, ministers of education had the discussion in March and they will continue the discussion in May. And so I believe that this exchange of views, how to tackle the uh, issue of preventing of radicalization at the European level will also be a good uh, basis for preparing our report for the European Council uh, in June. Also, 
uh, there was a very good exchange of national perspectives, national experiences that member states have already had so far in addressing this issue. I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have very little to add uh, to the excellent words of uh, the President of the Council. Um, I have to say I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed by the work done by the Presidency uh, over the last couple of days on uh, the issue of migration, on the need for Europe to react to the human tra tragedy that takes place in the Mediterranean. I was very pleased to see that the General Affairs Council takes the same approach to the issue as did the Foreign Ministers yesterday and, and the Interior Ministers. I think this bodes well for the preparation of the European Council the next Thursday. Uh, the ten uh, points uh, presented by uh, Commissioner Avramopoulos yesterday on behalf of the Commission are clearly a good basis for the debate in the European Council. All ten, ten points fit perfectly well with the questions put to um, uh, member states by President Tusk uh, for Thursday, so I believe we can uh, answer those questions by the proposals put on the table by the Commission. And the Commission is now very much looking forward to the reaction by member states. And, and let's not you know, mince words about this. Member states will have to step up to the plate and come up with decisions and clear measures that would allow you, the European Union through its member states, through its institutions, to react to this huge, huge challenge and this human tragedy that we see unfolding in the Mediterranean. Secondly, again, I have to uh, pay tribute to the Latvian presidency for doing an, an incredibly good job at preparing our debates on the way forward with uh, how we decide in the European Union. So the the debate we will have to come to an inter-institutional agreement, agreement between the Council, the Parliament and the Commission on how we create new legislation. To have this agreement is very important to create more transparency, to deliver a better product for our citizens and our companies and to make sure that Europe is big on big things and small on small things. And the Latvian presidency has done an incredible job in bringing together the different uh, positions of the member states and so now there is a coordinated position I'm very much looking forward to the letter that the Commission will receive we will feed that into our preparation and then I will talk to the European Parliament next Thursday listen carefully to them and then within a couple of weeks the Commission will come up with a proposal that will be the basis for our negotiations my final point on the working uh, lunch we had uh, again, here, uh, a convergence of views from different national standpoints. Member states all agree that there is no place for complacency and there is no more place for indifference as far as uh, radicalization is concerned, as far as intolerance is concerned. And um, I also felt a strong support for the Commission's idea to hold the first annual colloquium on human rights and the rule of law in October on the uh, separate issues but still linked issues of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, two different issues with different aspects, with a different history, with different effects, but at the end of the day both these issues lead to exclusion and discrimination against different <coughs> minorities in the European Union and we need really to tackle this issue. If we are to tackle radicalization, we also have to tackle discrimination. We also have to make sure that no single group in the European Union is excluded from European society. The European Union will exist, will grow and thrive. If everybody has a place in it, the European Union will suffer and fall apart if groups are excluded, even if they are small minorities. So I once again want to thank the Latvian Presidency for raising the issue, and I am very confident that we can come up with some concrete results also in the months to come to have a joint approach against uh, radicalization. Thank you very much. My name is Katarina Dele. I work for Al Jazeera Balkans. Just briefly on Bosnia, a lot has been said. I'm aware that it's been just a procedure today, but can you tell us um, what's expected or maybe specifically when can Bosnia apply for membership? Well, uh, let me just say that yesterday the General Affairs Council 
kind of finalized in a legal terms uh, the stabilization and association agreement. We had already a good discussion last time during Foreign Affairs Council in March in Brussels on Bosnia and Herzegovina. We noted the progress that has been made, the formation of the government now also we have felt and we had a special meeting yesterday morning with the presidency and the new foreign minister of Bosnia and Herzegovina where we discussed uh, issues that are related to uh, plans of uh, the new government first of all on uh, compact for for growth and jobs all the uh, reforms plans that have been outlined there also we addressed better coordination within the Bosnian and, uh, government on, on European policies. So I would not uh, now predict any timelines. What we have uh, seen is that after certain and unfortunately quite a long period of time uh, when there were some internal political turbulences we have seen now after elections, after the formation of the new government, a strong will to carry on necessary reforms. So based on those reforms, based on the progress, we will definitely come back to the issue. We will be assessing the progress. The European Commission will be preparing its annual assessment uh, according to the procedure. And then, based on progress, we will be seeing when and how far we can go also when it comes to candidacy and the final, and the final kind of membership. But uh, I would say that there is still quite a long way ahead. I would say that uh, I myself visited uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina in March. We discussed also what the European Union can do to assist Bosnia and Herzegovina and we assured yesterday our friends from Bosnia and Herzegovina that we stand ready to assist them in the reform process. But carrying out reforms, that's basically the responsibility of the government. Based on the success of reform is also uh, the progress when it comes to the Bosnian application and an ultimate membership at some point in, in the European Union. Thank you. Thank you very much and see you all next time. Thank you.